this is Riding with Ree. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My channel is all about first time horse ownership, but as well as first time horse ownership, I also like to create space on my channels for interviews and visits with people who are doing things differently, challenging perceptions, changing the way that we see norms in the industry. So today I'm going to share with you an interview from Gawsworth Track Livery, which is a new type of livery that's being discussed quite a lot in the UK. Um, it's a Zoom interview, but I'm going to just let it run. There's a lot of uh, pictures and stuff that I'll try and put in as, as we go, but I think it's a really interesting perspective on what the future of horse care could look like, and I hope that you really enjoy it. Outside of today's video, I may take a little break from YouTube. I didn't want to deprive you of this because um, we filmed it and I really want to share it with you, but you might have seen on my Instagram or Facebook that I posted recently that we had an update with the vet. It wasn't quite the update we wanted for now. It's something I need to do on my own. And so I'm just gonna take a step away from my channels for a little while to allow me to do that. And I hope that you understand. So yeah, let's get into the uh, interview with Goresworth Track Livery. Well, Beth, and thank you for spending part of your evening with me, because I'm sure you've had a really busy day. I don't think it ever stops with your kind of work. No, no, you're very, very welcome. Thank you. Well, I wanna start at like level one of like track okay. livery. What is track livery in its most basic form? The easiest way to describe a uh, track system is, say you've got a square field, and then you'd put, uh, obviously you have your, your fence that goes around your field, and then you'd put another internal fence within it. So that would then create a track and you would have all the resources at, at different places. So you would have your hay, so you'd have hay stations, dotted around the track and then you normally make sure your water is the furthest point away from the food source mm. so for us we have our barn so it's our shelter with the water in and then we have hay dotted around as far away as uh, possible and then <clears throat> from there the, the sky's the limit with it so you can add like enrichment of uh, brushes uh, mineral licks aromatherapy stations Herb garden is going mad. I've got fennel here, mint, celery, uh, marigold, calendula, whatever you call it. More mint, milk thistle, which is going mad. I am going to have to weed it a bit, like prune it down or whatever. And then this is chamomile. I still need it's kind of growing out, but not up. I don't know if they're ever going to be able to reach it. I might pull a bit up. See if it's. Uh, Pull that out, maybe put it there. So yeah, that that that's pretty much on its basic form. So I want to get onto Gawsworth and your specific setup there. But before we do, why why do people do track livery? Why not just have horses in a big paddock? Why track livery? It originally kind of came from people struggling with horses that um, are overweight or laminitic or can't graze lots of lush growing grass. So. You know, you've got a horse, it's come down with laminitis or it's obese and the vet says to you, this horse can no longer be out in a field. Um, and then you're left with either box resting them, uh, either just being turned out in a menage or just being ridden. And I think many people would agree, but that, that's not a uh, any kind of life for a horse to live in a box. Mm. So track systems are there. Well, you could turn to a track system then because... Uh, a true track system would be fully surfaced, not saying they have to be. Many, many people do well without surface track. The horse then can have unlimited access to freedom, friends and forage, and they don't have to compromise on any of that to uh, with eating too much grass or any problems with laminitis or EMS or Cushing's that kind of get exacerbated by a lot of grass. So, and then there's the other people that want to use it for barefoot rehab. So there's the surfaces that are involved, uh, navicular, again, laminitis. And then now we are seeing more and more normal livery horse keepers coming to uh, track system just for a more natural uh, life for their horse. Yeah, so I actually asked my Instagram audience what questions they had for you. And one of the questions was, do you get non-lame horses on your track livery system? So it sounds like that is becoming more commonplace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In the beginning, it was more just like fat ponies, laminetic rehab cases. Uh, but now, no, we do just get horses that um, are, are non-lame, just want to live a happy life, being free. Uh, mm. We get a lot of horses that... Um, 
are for retirement, but they don't want to just have them just chucked out in a field. They want them to be looked after daily. Yeah, I mean, I think I discovered you when, so my horse um, is currently on quite a long time of box rest at the moment. He had a pedal bone fracture um, early last year and it's been, it's been a long time. And there was a point at the end of last year where we thought we were going to have to retire him. And so I think I, I think that's how I found you. I was looking at retirement liveries and things, and I yeah. think Facebook. And you have a huge yeah. Facebook fan fandom, and I love it. I like every day. I, I like get your little videos up of like a horse is doing something on the track, yeah, yeah. a new horse being introduced, or like something's going on. It's like a little soap opera. And yeah, so talk to me about Gorsworth. Why did you set it up, and what what is it? What is it like there? So originally. Um... I got with my now husband uh, five years ago and we'd, we'd met on a livery yard years before, a traditional livery yard. So we, we'd been li normal liveries on a normal livery yard and uh, we had the opportunity to set up a livery at um, the family farm. Oh, and uh, my husband's father at the time, was always we had just a few grass liveries and he was always moaning, oh, the horse is churning up the grass and oh, you, you know how farmers go on about the grass. So one night me and Dan were out and uh, in a nightclub, had a few too many to drink and we were sat on a sofa and I like, it, it was like shouting in his ear, I'm like, babe, babe, there's this thing, you know, where horses, they live on a track around the edge of a field and he's like, you are. I said, yeah, they live on this track. And I thought he was going to say to me, like, that's just ridiculous. Don't be so stupid. And I honestly cannot tell you where I remember seeing it. I'm sure it was on Facebook, but I can't tell you the exact video of it. I do suspect it's a, a rehab place in New Zealand that rehab mm -hmm. these little mini ponies. And I think I saw it there. Anyway, he was like, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I was like, right, oh, okay. So uh, this was in the middle of winter. So I think we got to May and we started putting the first fence post out. We plotted where we wanted it. We started putting the first fence post out. I got a dicky bird what we were doing. Literally, not a clue. Not a clue. Look, at, we thought we did. And do you know what? It's fake it till you make it. That That's... <laughs> And if, if that's ever a true saying, Gores with track livery is the is the poster child for that saying. So we we put the fence posts up, and luckily it was the summer of I think I can't it was 2017 or 2018. I can't remember. We had six weeks of hmm. blazing sun. It didn't rain, so we got the fence posts in, and we were able to welcome our first liveries, even laminitic ones or. Uh, the threat of laminitis, what, what would get laminitis, because all the grass had burnt off. Each month we got a little bit of money together, we managed to buy a bit more surface and a bit more surface, and I set the page up, and um, I, I, I was very I was very unashamedly me, and I'm like Marmite, so some people love me for who I am, and some people really don't like me, and that's just how Gorse of Track Livery has grown. Uh, so we, we made it at that track there. We got it fully surfaced. There was already a barn there. It was an old um, cattle cubicle shed. Mm. And we just repurposed it the best way we could and incorporated it into the track. Uh, and and it, it became huge. But then we were outgrowing that place very, very quickly. So we had the opportunity to get land basically next door. But it was just a totally green site. So it was 34 acres of um, agricultural grazing land. And so it literally was at a gate to the, to the field. No road in, nothing at all. So we're, like I say, we were fast outgrowing the other place. And Dan said, right, my husband is up. We'll make just a temporary track now, non-surfaced, so we could go through planning permission to get the fully surface track and build a barn so um we did that we just put a bit of very big like i've just said a very very basic track uh but what we did do at our feeding uh, stations we have big bunkers mm -hmm. that are for uh, cattle to eat silage out of we brought them over and we put them at points around the track and we also used our concrete sleepers concrete railway sleepers which we had on the old track which you can pick up and move so we made a uh, concrete uh, sleeper feeding pad so it wouldn't get all mucky uh, around the troughs. So we set them up. Dan also built me a polytunnel, which was very... So this is, you've got to remember, this is going from 
what people saw was that our first track was quite a, it was a good track um <laughs> and so we had to kind of take a step down so we've gone from a fully surface track to this temporary track and beginning of the summer so it was about april maybe something like that we've got it might have been a bit earlier than that we've got it set up we've got the horses over there we're like right we'll get the planning permission through eight weeks to take the planning permission and we'll be able to build through summer get the new surface track in and it'll all be great well covid said no and obviously we had a huge backlog so we of taking eight weeks the new planning permission took nine months mm. so we got to like october november and it was finally approved and so at this point as you can october november the horses are like hock deep in mm. mud because we were having to take the tractor around to put bales out so we had to work as quick as we possibly could to get the barn built get the track built and so on the 1st of february 2022 we let the horses through onto the surface track so now your what you see on the facebook page is um what we've built we've got a big barn all purpose built and we've got horse safe fencing um and yeah it's what it's what you see today and we're always adding to it and it's getting ideas are getting bigger and more expensive <laughs> every day yeah it, and it really does you can see that journey i mean i've only followed for maybe i think at least six months maybe slightly less but like you said you can see all the steps you're taking like I saw recently you were putting a hill in which was very yeah. exciting yeah and it feels like you treat all the horses like you'd want your own treated you've got like the very best salt licks you've got um all of the the all the red horse products that you use to help treat the thrush you've got the herb garden like is it important to you that they are that you try and improve their quality of life like all the time with all these new things how do you keep on top of it all four of the horses on that track are mine anyway so and then when you're looking after other people's horses there's an added um pressure it's a good pressure though because you you can't slack or miss a beat because we, we just, you just can't because the owners are coming down and so and, and they all become my pets they're just my babies and there's some owners we don't see for years um so you've, you've always just got to keep on going and keep on investing back into the place so i know many people look oh look at how many horses we've got and how much we charge they're, oh they're making loads of money but every penny is plowed back into that plugging i have lots of other track system owner friends that we're always bouncing ideas off each other where um, i try to visit other tracks but as you know they're very few and far between uh, recently we came back from a, a trip to dubai just for a weekend and to visit their track because they came over to see us at, at our first track um so yeah and then we do have um because we've got a big presence and people i put a lot out there and people can see the good work that we do uh just purely from a marketing side of thing other, co other companies notice us mm -hmm. and they want to collab with us so that's you know we're very fortunate uh honored and privileged to uh work alongside some of the best um horse companies uh in the uk and that 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 really uh helps us that kind of support yeah for sure i want to ask in a minute about some of your rehab cases because they've been quite spectacular but talk to me about the trip to dubai what were you going out there looking for because we don't see that very much owners doing that kind of thing and not in the equestrian space anyway when they came to visit us they were the only track in Dubai. Wow. So since then, two others have been set up. And so the owner of the track that we, we're friends with says, you must come over, you can stay with us, just get your flights and we'll take you to visit the other tracks as well. And so they were really keen to talk to us and me and Dan were really keen to go over there and learn how they keep horses over there. You know, it's so different from also the air conditioning and the lack of, um, grass growing because many people think i'm anti-grass but all yeah. our hay yeah. all our hay is grass so yeah. grass yeah. is very very important to us which has got to be the right kind of type of grass but i mean that's a whole other subject i can have a whole other topic about uh so yeah we, we went over and we stayed i think it was four days and yeah it, it was a really good uh eye-opener um different ways of doing things uh where to put hay nets where to hang them um you know horse behavior introducing horses 
so yeah we, it was really good to bounce ideas off each other and then it was nice that it was uh warm <laughs> yeah for sure so you touched on there people think i'm anti-grass and i have to say when i had this initial conversation with my audience about track livery my first instinct was like oh i just hate the idea of him never eating grass again um and you've obviously made a conscious choice to not have a grass track um mm -hmm. it gets really muddy and stuff but and because of your laminitic courses but talk to me a little bit more about that for horses that can can eat grass so, Why do I have it without? So, you know, over here in the UK, we're very much indoctrinated um, to see the traditional livery yard set up as a stable block, and then you have your paddocks of lush green growing grass. But in reality, that is not a horse's natural diet, a field of lush green growing grass. Now, if we could re recreate what horses are meant to eat, which is lots of many different grasses and herbs uh bushes and eating minerals from the licking rocks and all that type of stuff then yeah that would be the ideal setup but over here in the uk we haven't got acres and acres and acres of all that kind of stuff so track systems originally come from a, a guy called jamie jackson who went out and studied the horses uh, in the Great Basin in America, he followed them around, watched how they moved, watched what they ate, their interactions, how they travelled around. Um, and, he, and he showed that um, horses travel up to 30 miles a day in search of different uh, resources. And they live on a scrubland type forage. So the hay that we grow is a lot closer to that diet than a field of lush growing grass which what we call monoculture so mm. one type of grass so many livery yards were originally once a farm dairy farm beef farm not saying all of them but many of them and, and they've diversified or changed into a livery yard and I, I, not many would ever think oh we need to change the grass of all these horses on traditional livery yards that have been turned out into lush fields of rye grass of clover and where we've seen all these problems like laminitis, EMS mm. and all these other metabolic problems, horses that are misbehaving but many of them are just wired on so much sugar and we find a lot of horses coming from eating that type of diet then living on a grass-free diet so many ailments and problems just subside but we go to a traditional livery yard and i can walk down a block and there'll be cresty necks fat sheaths big fat pads on them oh this one's doing this this one and it's that i see but before doing a track i would never have even yeah. noticed but now i see it horses have got diarrhea the you know they're going mad in the stable they're banging at the door they're lunging over the door when people are walking past that's not normal behavior for a horse the feeds we feed aren't like what you what a traditional livery yard would feed so you go to any other livery yard feed room and there'll be shiny bags of outshine and top spec and every type of thing shine and condition and it's just full of sugar and starch and fillers and rubbish. And you say to someone, do you know the sugar and starch content in that bag of food? And they'll go, no. Mm. I, I, well, why, why are you feeding that feed? Oh, well, she's feeding it in the next in the next stable. Well, you know, you, you, you say your horse is laminitic. Yeah, but it says it's laminitis approved. And it's honestly, mm. it, it's that, like I say, feeding is a whole other subject you could talk for for hours. But... My point being is we have many horses come to us with many, many problems and symptoms that most people wouldn't recognise. So yeah. poor hoof growth, fat pads, cresty necks, swollen sheaths, they come to us and they all disappear. And the best thing is when we have new growth from the coronet band mm -hmm. and you can see, and I try to post these pictures and people are starting to get it more now. You show a lot of before and after of thrush, of I think contracted heels. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, so talk to me a bit about the feet and what what you what the track does for that. So originally, like I say, when we set the track up, um, we were expecting just a load of fat little ponies just to be running that. I want the whole barefoot 
my, my mare was barefoot, but I was no way an expert. I still don't class myself as an expert. Now I'm not a farrier. I'm not a trimmer. I don't have any letters after my name. You've got to, you know, not take everything everyone says. What you see on the internet is, is gospel. As much as I do preach, I do yeah. have to be careful about what I say as well. Sure. So, yeah, so we had these horses come and you couldn't not notice the change in the feet, even if they weren't coming to have barefoot rehab you know people go oh yeah I've not, I've not got a problem with taking his shoes off he's retired i'm not doing anything with him anyway that's fine we're taking the shoes off i'm like great take the shoes off and um, a couple of months go by you can see this lovely tight growth coming in ripples are disappearing and so the surfaces that we have so this is another benefit of having a surfaced track we purposely make different areas on the track rougher more difficult to walk over then we have more comfortable surfaces like sand because this mimics what they would naturally walk over in the wild mm. so obviously I, I would be posting these pictures and horses would be getting better and then more of these lame horses would just arrive and like I say you, you know you can't help but notice the changes people say oh you know you've done so well with that horse you've you're a miracle worker, you've done this, you've done that. We don't actually do anything. We've created the environment for walk themselves better. So obviously we do treat thrush. We do have our trimmer come and trim. But if you've not got all the other things in place, like the correct diet, the movement, the freedom and being with other horses for the mental well-being, you're not, you can treat thrush and, and trim as much as you want, but it's not going to, yeah, you'll be, you'll be you'll be swimming upstream with it. Yeah. Oh, and I mean it's lovely to watch, and I do think you you should give yourself credit because, like you say, you do actually look at things very closely. You are there every day treating the thrush with these products. So, track livery is is not very common at the moment in the UK. There's not that many yards. But if someone wanted, say, someone's on a traditional livery yard like myself, and they want to take some of the steps towards more of a track livery style setup. what can they do to give a little bit more of a first of all um ask your livery yard owner there needs to be a demand for this so even if it's just a basic even if it's just in the summer because the majority of um, grass related problems are when the the grass is in full growth lush uh, growing. I'm not saying we don't have problems in the winter, but you know, you, you've got to start from somewhere realistic. Mm -hmm. So even if a few of you could get together and say to your yard owner, listen, there's 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 a few of us, or even if it's just one of you, please can I set up a temporary track around the edge of my field and then as soon as it starts getting wet and muddy again, you take it down and they and they go back to living, you know, in a field. Um so that would be my first thing because without demand these yards won't be created um and also then i'd be very close to looking at what you're feeding the horse does the horse even need feeding um are you supplying the right minerals and vitamins our horses i think there's only five of them that are fed a hard feed and the rest get everything they need from the hedgerows the herb garden the hay and the mineral licks we put around so yeah so back to what you would need to do um i would be stripping the feed right back and making sure what you're feeding is absolutely necessary. I'd be checking the hay and find out what uh, grasses are made up, uh, are making up your hay or haylage. And if it's full of just ryegrass or just clover and you're battling things like laminitis uh, and crusty necks and EMS and Cushing's, you know, I, I have people messaging me and ringing me saying, my horse has been on box rest for two months and it's not getting better. Or what, what, what's in the hay? Oh, I don't know. And then they go and look at it or find out you can get it tested and it comes back that it, it's full of ryegrass and clover. It's not going to help the situation. And then, you know, it all, I don't want to sit here and preach because everyone just says to me, oh, yeah, well, you've got an amazing track. How It's very easy for me to sit here and go, just move or. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got to be realistic as well. But if, if the livery yard's not supplying turn out in the winter as well where they're getting out um and you know they're not having the freedom and the forage and the friends then in my opinion the, these livery yards aren't fit for purpose yeah and that'll be a very emotive um thing for me to say but it's, it's something i really stand by because at the end of the day it's the horses 
that will be suffering. But I see so many livery yards and owners that are happy to have, uh, oh, they've got a lovely heated tap room, they've got a brew room, they've got a horse walker, they've got a full set of show jumps, they've uh, got a hot horse shower, all that. But then the horses are stood in the stable for 23 hours a day. And it's, you know, what are the livery yards there for? Are they there for the person or are they there for the horse? And for me, I personally feel like it should be there for the horse. And don't get me wrong, I do not people think people are getting up in the morning or livery yard owners are getting up in the morning going, do you know what? I'm just going to lock a load of horses up and feed them sugary crap and I don't care. I do genuinely believe it is a lack of education and a lack of knowledge. So that's another thing I would say to people is, there are lots of natural um, barefoot, uh, natural living clinics happening, open days, there's loads of pages on Facebook. There's, there's uh, more books coming out on track system, more natural way of keeping horses. So these are really simple things you can do sat on your sofa. You don't even have to do anything or go anywhere. And there's a wealth of knowledge in your pocket, on your phone. It is there if people are willing to you know just step away from the traditional side just for a second and and look for it it is there and that's why you know i'm doing this with you today i have many many people asking for interviews and doing stuff and every yard it, it's it's um i'm very busy and i could easily just say oh, I, can't, I can't be bothered yeah. i put enough on facebook i can't be bothered but i thought you know there's, there's it, people like yourself from a more traditional setup and you're mm. out there showing the world the, uh, our our way so I think things like this it's important for us trackies trackies to speak up and do these interviews yeah well do you know what I really appreciate it and you answered my final question which was if someone wants to read up themselves where can they do that so I know that you are featuring in a book that's coming out or it has already come out yeah so I'll shamelessly plug Amy Dell Anthony mm -hmm. Anthony's book uh, it's horse, horse track system uh, it's a guide to keeping your horse more naturally um, and yeah, it's a really good book. It's really easy to read. Loads and loads of pictures. Really good quality pictures. Case studies, track building, fencing, where to put your hay, how to put, how to tie it up, and what areas. Really, hundred percent. You can get it on Amazon, and you can get it off her website. I'll see if I can get some a list of um, links. links. That we can yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, do you know what? It's it's a really good conversation, and at times uncomfortable because you know I sit there yeah. and you're and I'm like oh I do that and oh I've done that and you know I mean myself my horse is literally on box press which is not a choice I want but it's happening no. and so you know it's it's that thing of being comfortable in the uncomfortable I think as a horse owner and as you said just taking that moment to step into a slightly different way of thinking and educate yourself a bit more so that we can all hopefully take steps towards putting the horse first um, yeah absolutely yeah, it feels like it's an industry we're getting there you know some of the top show jumpers I think at a recent international competition with barefoot yeah um, yeah so, right. you know, it feels like people are starting to listen which is which is cool um, myself and yeah. food, so. it's all for the benefit of the horse at the end of the day isn't it but i will say it once you go down that track route uh and natural horse keeping i hate the word holistic i hate saying it because it just like but you had the holistic whole horse uh looking at ho looking after horses that way um it's very difficult to go back because mm. I was out for 20 years. I kept horses the traditional way. I had more shards and rugged up to the eyeballs. And I fed them all the bagged feeds and they lived in the stable in the winter. And I didn't want my horse going out with other horses because it would get hurt. And I, I lived that way. I never go back there now. So once you do start, it's like taking off an old pair of glasses and putting on another pair and being like, I know nothing about horses. My yeah. whole life's been a lie. Um, so yeah, it's it's once you start down that route, and uh, you know, I would always urge people if you can to uh, when track deliveries are having open days to go and uh, see it for yourself. Yeah, well, next time you have one, I'll make the trip up because I think they would love to see that. My audience. Yeah, before. yeah. Well, you know, you're welcome to come. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get a uh, open day this year. Uh, I'm not sure. And last year we got married at the farm, so <laughs> we couldn't do it then. Uh, but you, you're welcome to come up for yourself yeah and you can get some content for the for your channel
Yeah, maybe we could do a little yard tour. I think people yeah, would yeah. really like that. That'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I won't keep you any longer because I'm sure it's been a long day ahead of a long week. So thank you so much for answering all the questions and being so open and, and transparent and taking the time. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're more than welcome, honestly. It's been a pleasure. Well, that is it. I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure that Goresworth Track Livery will be checking the comments. So if you have any further questions, pop those below. As I said, I'm going to take a little break, so I may not be around for a little while. Um, but I promise to give you an update either here or on the community tab um, as soon as as soon as I am ready. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.